I can't hear you, Bill. Is your audio? There we go. I'll hold the space bar down. Well, good, good day, good morrow, good evening, gentlemen of the fourth community. Delightful to be here. Uh, I'll make I'll make an early comment here to say. Well, I'll, I'll skip the comment. We'll come back on this uh, topic later. So today we're having a very short presentation on a very clever computation of pi. And what I am pointing out is the entire computation of pi is done in two lines of code. We can't hear you anymore, uh, at least as I can't. Either. Bill, you've muted yourself. Unmute. No, everything's fine. All right, are we working fine now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very good. So this is a lot of work as a way to compute pi. It uses the arc tangent uh, computation. Instead, I would like to find a formula that only uses one variable. My simple mind can only track one variable at a time, and we're going to call that n. Now, n is our desired value for pi. And f of n, the function of n, is the deviation from pi. So if we look down at the bottom, it says if, uh, uh, let's see, we're going to do this iteratively. Uh, each term is the function of the prior term plus the function of n0. So as the function of n0 approaches 0, then, the function, then n0 itself will approach pi. So we will be using the iterative method. We don't know the value of n to begin with, so we'll just make a guess, and we'll start with the number of 1. Now, the next step is we need to find a function of pi that is 0. So put on your thinking hat. What function of pi is 0? Because as that function of pi approaches 0, we will get our answer. Well, at first I thought of maybe uh, pi squared. Well, that's not zero. And then the log of pi, that's not zero. And e to the pi is certainly not zero. So what about a cyclic right. function? Well, then I thought about tangent. And if we look at the green arrow at, uh, uh, at, the, value of, at the value of pi, the value for pi, tangent of pi is zero. So this would be a suitable calculation, but the function is not continuous, uh, would be difficult to impossible to compute. So what other function of pi is zero? Aha, the sign. So if the variable is uh, at pi is zero and the function is continuous, so Let's look at geometric example. If we start out with an n, an n0 of 1, the sine of n0 is about 0.84. So we take our n0 and the deviation, add them together to get n1. Now for n1 at about 1.84, the sine of n1 is about 0.9. Add those together, two things are happening. We're getting closer to pi and also our error is diminishing. On this last calculation, if we add uh, n2 and the sine of n2, bingo, we reach, we reach a pi. So here's how we calculate it. For each iteration, n1 is equal to n0 plus the sine of n0. Well, that looks pretty simple. So in the fourth term expansion, all we had to do is a floating point duplicate, a floating point sine, add the two together. We put that into a wrapper. The wrapper is 
run pi. 1e0 is the floating point one. We'll iterate six times through the expansion and loop. And here comes, in uh, viewing this as a D chart, we see the simplicity at the top right, <laughs> top left, we set up the uh, first value of, of uh, floating point one, set up a do loop with the uh, little circle with an X on it, floating dupe, floating sign, floating add, do it six times, out comes pi. And finally, here is our conclusion. The values of N zero at the top left uh, after run pi is one. At the right of it is 0.84, which is the sign of one. Add those together. For the second line on the left is 1.84. We got our error term at 0.96. Do that five times. The fifth error term, which is the second from the bottom on the right, is the error is 00000041999. It produces at the bottom left pi to 36, uh, pi to 16 decimal places. And in the blue, blue green, we see that if we had done one more error term, it would be 1.2 times e to the minus 16, a truly small value. Well, we see at the bottom of the screen, by this expansion, we get signed to 16 decimal places. And from the CPU, likewise, we get 16 decimal places. So I realized, in conclusion, I realized that any calculator that can program a sign can also compute pi. So we're kind of cheating because we're using one transcendental function to find another. But in this case, we're interested in exploring the shortcuts, we're finding methods and tricks. In other words, the challenges, how to solve for pi in two lines of code. And this method gives a clarity, much more clarity than an infinite number series. So do we have any questions briefly? Great, thanks for the use of the hall. I had a great presentation to you all in a month. Back Excellent. To